Welcome to the Beniverse. My name is Ben Friedman, and today I am reviewing the 2021 film released on HBO Max in January called Lockdown, starring Anne Hathaway and Chidator Ejiofor. I'm sorry if I butchered that name. I tried my best. And this film follows a couple who is trapped during COVID times. They're living in the house together. Their relationship has grown stale, but they're stuck together. And essentially, they've soured on each other, and they're going to break up. But then when an opportunity arises for them to make a fortune by stealing a diamond from Anne Hathaway's character's company, they take that and it turns into a pseudo romantic comedy slash drama with COVID slash bank heist. Hi Paxton. We heard London's in Tulsa. Let's go see lockdown. We are all locked in this psychological prison of burning aloneness. How's Linda? She's somewhere in the house. Is there some type of issue? We are fine. And if this sounds like a mismatch of genres, that's because that is what this film is. This film is one of the worst films of the year, point blank. It does not work. There is one redeeming quality of this film, and that is Anne Hathaway and Chidator Ejiofor's chemistry. Them as a couple is completely believable, and they have this natural on-off kind of chemistry that it plays off. It allows the romantic comedy part to feel well done, but not unrealistic or cheesy. They, Like I said, they have a very on-screen natural chemistry, which that's the only redeeming part of this film. Nothing else about this film works. It feels like it is actors and directors coming together kind of to have this message about COVID and like uh, try to capture the spirit, but without actually really understanding what uh, makes COVID so hard for people, I guess, of lower wealth and I guess normal Americans who don't have that kind of celebrity lifestyle. And that's not a criticism on them. I don't think this movie is inherently flawed in the sense that there wasn't something interesting to work with. It's the fact that COVID is the main part of the film. They keep showing Zoom and all that. And then ultimately this film leads to a bank heist and COVID could be completely ignored. It really just feels like a setup to have these two characters trapped. And then as we're watching a heist go through in COVID times, it doesn't work. The characters, one of the things that pissed me off so much is the characters never wear masks during the heist. And I mean like not face masks, I mean the literal ones that you wear uh, to protect other people during COVID. Like, you know, the face masks that go around your mouth and nose. They aren't wearing that at the end when they're in public. And it's like, okay, you've established this whole thing that this film is centered around COVID and it is a COVID bank heist. And yet when the time comes where they're in public, nobody's wearing a mask or even makes reference of it. It has nothing to do with COVID at the end, which is like, okay, you have this premise and then you completely choose to ignore it. It doesn't even make sense. Why bother with that premise? Anyway, is there anything else redeeming about this movie? Not really. There is literally very little to enjoy. There are some cameos from celebrities like Ben Stiller and Mindy Cowling that I guess are enjoyable and they play their part fine. They're not non-comedic in this film, but I mean, it's always fun, I guess, to see Stiller in a movie. But besides that, I mean, there is really not much to praise. It is, everything doesn't work in the sense that like the story's confusing. It never gets to the heist. The heist, like I said, besides the fact that it's poorly executed, it also just like takes too long to get there. And it's not exciting. It doesn't feel earned and there's no elaborate plans. There's nothing that makes that heist genre exciting. Like there's none of the plan coming up with. It never feels like there's stakes. Nothing feels like it ever goes wrong. It's just like it loses all of its energy right away. And had this film just centered around Anne Hathaway's character in Chittator Ejiofor's I keep butchering that name and I do apologize. Had this film just centered around these two characters going through marriage troubles while being stuck in the house due to COVID, it's a much more interesting drama that I think resonates with people. 
But what ends up happening is, is they kind of go Hollywood with it and like, oh, we're going to add these action adventure elements and we're going to add this heist and we're going to put fun cameos in it. And it's going to also be like this pseudo commentary on COVID, but it's also like, it's a thriller, but it's also this romantic comedy. It's just, it doesn't know what it wants to be. And it's really interesting because this comes from Doug Lyman, who's fairly well received well praised director who usually has a really good grip on the stories he's telling in this one it's just lost and it never comes close to paying off and there's a reason this movie went straight to hbo max and didn't get a proper theatrical release it is truly because nobody cared about this movie i remember this trailers for this movie coming out and then never remember it actually being released and as I'm going through the end of the year to kind of try and watch as many movies as I can I saw that on the list and I'm like that movie came out already it is the biggest sin this movie is is it's forgettable movies can be bad and fun this movie's bad and boring which if you're going to go with that if you're going to make a bad movie make it a fun movie and just have something, and I get they weren't intending to make it a bad movie, but there's just nothing to grapple on with. Like I said, Anne Hathaway is a very charming actress in this film, and I think she's has a great on-screen presence, but they can't save something that never had any chance of being good, and that's ultimately what Lockdown is. It is a failure in mass proportions, and it's, I think, further solidifies that idea that this disconnect with the general audiences and Hollywood that I don't necessarily subscribe to, but I think you can point as at a film like this as evidence of saying that. Like, this is how they don't understand common Americans. And like I said, I don't subscribe to that theory, but after watching this movie, if somebody made that argument, it'd be really hard to say I disagree, which is just a bummer because it really just gives credence to, I guess, a narrative that I just don't think, I think is used to push an agenda more than actually has relevance in our culture. Excusing all that, like I said, this film is just bad. Do not seek out this film. I don't know anyone who's watched this film besides me. So if you're watching this review, I don't know why. Maybe you're that one fan. If you did like this movie, let me know. I'd kind of be shocked, but maybe there's some lockdown fans here. I, If you are, you are. Sure, I, I'll believe that. So guys, thank you for following. Tomorrow uh, is going to be day four. No, day five of the Advent calendar. And I'll just kind of say what the movie is. I am doing a musical documentary on a rock band from the 60s, but not the Disney Plus one, but it did come out on a streaming service. So stay tuned, take care, and thank you all for listening. Bye-bye.